Hello everyone, welcome to the Munich MASH. We are here in Munich, Germany, and it is otherwise known as the Munich Action Sports Heroes Festival, and it really is a festival this year. Today, we're gonna to be concentrating on the BMX Street Rink Contest here at the Olympia Park. They have taken the ice out of the ice arena, and we are getting ready to drop these BMX riders into a really fantastic course. Good audience on hand. My name is Troy Manner. I'm going to be with you for the next two hours for this street rink contest. And with me is Sebastian Keat, a legend. And if you haven't been hiding under a rock for the last few years, he's the guy who ended up on the last cover of UK Ride BMX. Is that correct? That's right, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, there we go. Um, that's us folks, bottom left hand side, and look at this arena here and the course. Sebastian, tell us a little bit about the course here and then we'll talk about the athletes after that. Well, first of all, it's an all street course designed by Brian Kaczynski. Obviously, he knows what he's doing. He's one of our judges. One of our judges today. And there's a bit of everything. We've got flat rails, we've got kink rails, we've got hovers, we've got tiny quarter pipes, flat banks. There's a bit of everything for every kind of style. And what are we going to be expecting from these guys? Because BMX has taken a lot of development in the last few years. I mean, leaps and bounds, actually, with some of the things that guys are doing from back in the day. You know, tail whips are now becoming double, triple, and quadruple tail whips. Flip variations are in there as well. I mean, what can we expect to see on a course like this for people that are just joining us and not really familiar with what the guys are doing on BMX these days? The street riding you're about to see is going to be progression at its finest. I mean, we've got riders like Alex Donerkey who's just pushing it to the new levels. We've got so many new tricks on flat rails and, and then you've got riders like Garrett Reynolds and it's just, yeah, it's going to be quite a show. Well, it took these guys quite a long time to build this course up here and uh, we can see some of the features being put together here. Uh, pretty spectacular. How is it for these riders to navigate around a course like this? Is, is line choice going to be specifically important in, in this contest? They're going to want to use most of the course. They're going to want to mix up like using the kink rails, the ledges. and You tend to not want to stay on one part. So as long as you've got a good mix on all aspects of the course, you should favor well the judges. All right, well, there you can see some of the kink ledges and rails that these guys are going to be navigating down today at this BMX Street Rink Contest at the Munich MASH. And this is the second year of the Munich MASH. Uh, the end of June is traditionally a pretty quiet month for action sports in and around the Munich area, but not in the last two, three years because we've had these big action sports festivals and it's actually grown in its second year. So this is looking very good for this event, ladies and gentlemen. We're glad to have you along for the ride. And we're going to get things going with a quick course preview here in a couple of seconds as uh, we'll take a look at what this course looks like from a rider's eye view. And now it's a quarter. All right, well, there you go. A couple of uh, options for these guys here, and uh, looking pretty good. And it looks like already there's going to be a gauntlet thrown down in this first couple of heats. By the way, the uh, way it works out here is there's going to be 12 invited riders, two heats of six athletes going for it to get into a jam session with six athletes. Talk about some of the guys we're seeing here on uh, screen right now. Obviously, Garrett Reynolds needs no introduction. Absolute legend in the sport. We've got Chad Curley, Brock Rayford, Daniel Tunte, and Felix Prangenberg. Felix is our youngest rider today, so he'll be looking to impress the judges. And here we got Dan Lacey, absolute street riding legend from the UK, Donerkey, one of the new guys, Devon from California, he's proved himself in the free coasters and all, all of the new, new school tricks, Bruno Hoffman, one of the most consistent riders and obviously Germany's most prolific street rider. So yeah, we've got a stacked heat. And there are our riders here for the BMX street ring. Get some headshots of them pretty quick. There we go. <laughs> Just saw Felix do the uh, brief course preview for us. He did well recently at the Rebel Jam in London, made finals. Another German rider, Daniel Tinte. 
got a lot of kind of new school moves, does a lot of decades on the street. Got that awkward close up of the face shot there. <laughs> yeah, you love those, don't you? Eh? <laughs> Let's hang out on camera for 10 minutes while we wait for the next guy to be on there. That's Brock Rayford. He got fourth here last year. He's 21 years old. One of the new school street riders. Packed crowd out there. Baracco, he was third here last year. The only rider that wants four piece bars. Currently lives in Barcelona. Got a lot of style. And here he is, the legend, Garrett Reynolds. A legend at what, 25 now, I think he is? Only 24 years old. 24 years old, unbelievable. It says a lot about skill. There he is, Chad Curley. Recently got over a big injury where he broke his jaw. That's had his jaw wide shut, so good to see him out there. Back healthy again. Had a lot of fun watching him at the uh, BMX Masters in Cologne a couple of years ago where he was uh, just killing it in dirt. Dan Lacey. Biggest 360s in the game. Recently hurt his ankle. He spent a month in Austin, same with Chase Hawk. One of the brightest sort of prospects in the UK as far as street lines concerned. Recently won the Rebel Jam, his first contest, his first pro first contest. contest. Went in there and took the win. Devin Smiley. Definitely one of the new school riders. He recently won best trick at the Simple Session. He's definitely got what it takes on the big occasions. Bruno Hoffman. 21 years old from Germany. Probably one of the most successful street riders in Europe. Here he is, Dennis Ennison. Surfer boy. <laughs> Absolutely unbelievable human being. I just spent a week in San Diego with Dennis and such an inspiration. AK, last year's winner. He'd be looking out to get a good score here, the Colt Rider. Well, the reigning BMX street ring champion is going to be uh, the guy with the target on his back today for sure. All right, so these guys are going to get out on course, get a quick warm up run going here, and then uh, we'll start with our first rider. Really looking forward to seeing this because it's been so long since I've actually had a chance to do BMX and and uh, it always amazes me what these guys are coming up with as far as tricks. And I mean, you know, uh, back in the day, I think it was actually at the Rebel Jam when Wade did the, the first bike flip on BMX or at least the first one in a contest, I was just like blown away. And that was what, in 2002 or three, wasn't it? Something like that. As you can see, the, the, the progression is always being pushed and at every contest, new tricks are, are created and yeah I mean street riding over the last few years has gone to new levels especially uh, with the addition of free coasters it's reached a technical level that I've never even seen before. Free coaster allowing the rider to ride backwards without actually having to pedal the pedals backwards like heck in the day and uh, yeah, what a difference that's made. So there you go our format the semi-final 12 athletes there'll be two heats the top six run uh, advance from the two runs, the best one counts. And then in the final, we'll have a jam session, 15 minutes long, maximum 200 points. And then uh, it'll be a single run in the final with the six athletes. So basically it's down to three runs in the end, the best two counting in total. Yeah, it's really important for the riders to get out there and get a good qualifying run in. It's two runs, best one counts. So it's all on the line in qualifying. It's, it's nice to get that the first run in, get a good score in. That way in the second run you can go out, relax a little, maybe try something a little bit more difficult. You definitely want to get that first run score in the bag to give you a chance of moving on to final. I mean, it's sort of like a safety run. You have to have a good run when the, the, the quality level is the way it is here. And with the tricks being so hard and so to be consistently good in, in all 
aspects of the course on every obstacle is really difficult and I think the winner today will definitely be the most consistent rider. All right, well, the winner is going to be marked by these guys here, our panel of judges, and uh, you know these guys as well. Lots of experience sitting here. Ryan Kaczynski, obviously, the rail slayer, knows what he's doing, so definitely, definitely deserves his position there as a judge. Jeff Klugerweitz as well from Chicago, prolific street rider, so he'll be... He'll be no he knows what he's doing out there, and then there's Hank, in the UK, he's been a judge on the European scene, scene for the past 10 years. It's good chatting with Hank, he definitely, definitely knows what, what he's doing as far as judging is concerned. Mark Spilkey, he actually won an X Games uh, silver medal back in 2003, I believe. I think they uh, switched positions because that graphic was wrong there, and uh, <laughs> I think we'll see Marcus's name here. Yep, there you go. <laughs> I used to ride one of Marcus's old bikes a long time ago. Dragonfly? <laughs> Uh, no, it was uh, before that, actually. Oh, wow. Pegs all around, rotor, brakes front and back. <laughs> Old school. <laughs> this is our head judge here, Akeem Kajowski. He's, he's been a head judge on the European scene for the past 10 years or so. And he'll be checking over every judge's score to make sure that no one's kind of out of line and not hooking up their friends yeah. and whatnot. So. And I also, uh, uh, they dropped the high and low scores here with these five judges, correct? That's right, yeah. yeah. So it's a pretty fair judging system, I, I have to say. And Akeem Kioski, our uh, head judge, is also a pretty prolific vert rider from uh, from Germany. So nice to see him again. He's uh, been around the scene for quite a long time. A lot of experience in that judging panel, for sure. These guys are going to be battling it out today, by the way, for 30,000 euros in prize money. So if you're joining us from the States or Canada, that's a pretty penny. And our first rider out will be Felix Prangenberg. The 17-year-old young gun from Rosbach in Germany here. So it'll be interesting to see how our uh, young guy here who gave us a course preview does in his run. Never easy being the first rider in the heat, but he started well. Big feed with the hard way, 180. Oh, big no hand on that skinny quarter. Rail hard three. Last one to double peg. Molly three. Nice by 40. Double pegs over hard way 180. Felix is so consistent. Should also uh, clarify too that uh, hard is the opposite uh, direction to where the guy is getting on the rail or uh, going up the rail in that case, correct? Yeah, hard, hard feeble is, is where you pull to the left. So it's a normal spin, but it's always harder because the wheels in the way. But that was a great run for Felix, he'll be stoked on that. 17 years old, got a big future ahead of him. Take a look back here at some of the slow mos, and wow, really Hoffmanian style on that techno hander. There's that nolly three, half cap tail whip to the pedals, another angle of that nolly three. So yeah, in general, it was a good run. He didn't crash. Pulled everything that he went for. Well, there you go. First man out, he'll hold on to that hot seat position with a 78.20 and uh, first place for now. But hey, you know, we do have a big list of riders coming out here to try and do some damage in this first run. Next rider out, Daniel Tunte. Another German rider. He's won more or less every contest in Germany. So he's starting to make his name for himself on the international scene. You can see there are time 45 seconds for this intro run. Nice blast into ice. Rick Fakey. Wow. Wow, yeah, he's right. Over to back with the to back over. Hard one. Over to arm 180. Wow. 
fakey tail whip, fakey, fakey out. Tail whip. Pegs to over normal pegs. Decade. Just slipping the pedal. How much is that going to cost him? The judges are keeping a close eye on all these mistakes. Hopefully the judges will take into account the first half of his run, which is super technical. I don't think it matters too much to slip the pedals on a trick, but they know that he can do that easily. It'll be interesting to see if they place him above Felix or not. Well, first run for Daniel Tunta is in the bag. We'll see uh, how he does score-wise. He's got to beat 78. Technically, it was harder than Felix's run. Here's that backwards crook over the L. There's that bar fakey. Backwards whip, lands fakey. <laughs> Gets away with it. 82.20, first guy to jump into the 80s, so he moves into the top spot and will hold on to the hot seat as we get ready with our next rider, Brock Rayford. 21-year-old. Brock was riding amazing in practice. He had his line dialed, pulling everything, every go. Such a beast on a bike. Always riding with a smile on his face. He was fourth here last year. Tooth over. Far ice. Heading up the up rail. Wow. Big peg nice. rail. Pegs to hard 360. The hard way on the hover. So much power in Brock's riding. That pegs to over hard three. So hard to separate the riders from the judges. Yeah, I mean, we always talk about this in, in all action sports at this point in time, you know, regardless of it's BMX, mountain bike, skateboarding, freestyle motocross, the judge's only solution is to take a look at the mistakes these guys are making rather than try and pick apart the run like we have the luxury of doing here with the slow motions. Yeah. Big, hard 360 up the up rail. There's another angle of that. Perfect. Gets all the way around. Gonna look at that Smith hard way now on the hubbard. Always got a smile on his face. Yes, Brock. That's something I really appreciate when guys can get out there and have a good time and, and you know, you see it in their riding, you see it in their attitude. And uh, I think that the audience and the judges can see that as well. There you go, 81.20 points for Brock. So he's sitting in second place. That's a solid run. And um, I think he'll probably try and improve on that. Maybe with a couple of additions in the second run. And we move over to Simone Baracco from Italy. Baracco has so much style in this guy's riding. Definitely one of my favorite street riders. And we're gonna start. There's a fast one over the L rail. Nice come calm up. Ali back wheel bonk on that sub box. Oh. Oh, ride up to crank arm so hard. Nice crank arm slide down the double pink. He likes those crank arms. Wow. <laughs> so much speed. Got third place here last year. I think he wanted Oh no! I think he wanted the crank arm up, the double pink. problem with a 45 second run is these guys don't get a rewind on any of this stuff to go back and try it again and you know show the judges that they can actually pull it off you just have to rely on their second run yeah I can't imagine that we're going to see uh, Simon with a score that's going to put him up any higher than third place at this point here's that crank arm pop 
laps over on the end. Here's that double tyre ride to crank wow. slide. Just loops off the back there. It's so hard to control a crank arm slide because you can easily loop out. Seventy-five point eight zero. So he's sitting down at the bottom of the ranking at this point. But like we said, that uh, second run's coming up. Next up, Garrett Reynolds. Garrett Reynolds, the best street rider of all time, in my opinion, has won seven X Games medals. Owns his own bike company. Recently shot the BMX World with his Red Bull Edit. Wow! Amazing start to his run. Double tire ride to truck off. Switch fast and hop. Heading towards the up rail. He's got a lot of speed. Back wow! Back is unbelievable. Off the ledge. He did that, did that to tail whip out in practice. Yeah, maybe he's saving that one for the second run then. Oh my goodness! Feeble 540. Switch whip. with the New Jersey, Garrett Reynolds. Currently lives in San Diego. Oh, he wanted to bask into that ice and that double pink. Solid first run. A couple of tricks he didn't quite get, but I'm sure we're going to see them in his next run. Yeah, but that was a pretty amazing first run. And I mean, I didn't see a lot of mistakes in there. I'm not picking it apart th at the same level that you are, but... Uh, for me, that was an amazing run. No real mistakes, he just didn't do a couple of things he wanted to do. There's that switch bath and hop. Backwards, 50-50, up the, that's where he wanted the tail whip. I mean, Here's for me, feeble to 540 here. Yeah, that's amazing. And for me, it's incredible that he can fakey in, hop up there and, and you know, 50-50 grind that thing. No matter what he does, <laughs> which is hard enough on yeah. his own. There he goes wow. into first place. 91. So uh, our first guy to break the 90 mark. He's got first place. Garrett Reynolds on top at the moment. Next rider up, Chad Curley. Chad's definitely one of the guys that could take Garrett off the top spot. So consistent. Always links rails with manuals and other ledge tricks. Recently won the Do Tour, actually last weekend. So he's definitely, definitely been riding a lot. Second place here last year behind AK. Here's that switch whip hop to start. And just hold on to it. Switch fast and hop. Nice bar. Wow. Nice down whip. Great start to Chad's run. Heading towards the up rail. I think that was crooked up to Bask into manual to whip. Here he goes, he's on, he's on one now. Bask into feeble to hardway 180. It's funny how that works, you know, land one trick that you really want to have and the rest of the run just sort of flows. You get the special up and then that's it. Yeah. Molly knows, double peg 180. Amazing man. It was non-stop, trick to trick too. I mean, so many combos in there. Like you were saying, he just links them all together so effortlessly, effortlessly, excuse me. Chad Curley with a great run. Well, he did more tricks than Garrett. They're just trying to decide now. There's that switch hop to start his run. Just got away with that. There's that feeble to hard three. So he did the feeble hard three, Garrett did the feeble 540, which is harder. It's going to be a close call here for these judges. Let's see what they have to say. That was our sixth rider in this heat. 86, wow. That's a bit of a surprising score considering Garrett's 91 and that uh, he had such a good run. But he's sitting in second place right now with the second run still to come here in this heat. So we should go back to the top of the running order in the first heat, which means Felix Prangenberg will start. Garrett Reynolds on top there. We see Chad Curley in second. Daniel Tunte in third place. Let's 
let's not forget, it's going to be the top three guys from each of these first two heats that are going to be moving on to the next round in our jam session. I think we'll see an amazing one next uh, in Garrett Redder's next run. Now that he's got a run solid on the scoreboard, he can just gamble a little and try some of the hardest tricks that he's got in his bag. It's a bit scary for me to, to, to hear you say gamble a little with the run that we saw him do, so I'm, I'm excited to see that run. But in the meantime, we've got Felix Brangenberg. He's going to go back for his second run here. Let's see what he can do and if he can uh, make an impact in this one. Starting with the half cab whip. Is that Feeble 360? Good no hand on that skinny quarter. Double take the hard way, 180 full cab. Scary to see how consistent Felix is at the young age of 17. Yeah, I mean that shows a lot of maturity as far as uh, you know, his riding is concerned, for sure. Really reminds me of how Bruno was back in the day. Bruno's only 21 years old, but he's been on the scene for a long time and always been so consistent. Fast plan 360, if I'm not correct, if I'm not mistaken. That's cool. He's there over two. Both runs solid for Felix. He should be stoked on those. And a little bit of variation between the two runs as well, which I really like, and I think the judges are going to appreciate that as well. I mean, it's best run count, so you can, you can do two of the same run and just try and better it. But it's cool that he showed that he's got other tricks. Here's that big no hand on the skinny quarter. And that is a skinny quarter. It's only a meter wide. I mean, it's tiny to be pulling off that kind of air. And then, you know, you gotta, you got to be precise on the landing. Here's that double peg to over hard 360. Wow, there you go. Nice improvement on his score for his second run. He jumps to an 81 and uh, hangs on to fifth place, though. Daniel Tuntap next. So he's on the bubble. He's the guy that's on the bubble. Riding second in the list. He's got third place, and uh, he's the, basically the only man that can really get pushed down at this point. Fast into ice. Looks like he's going to do the same run. He's got tail up to fake The German riders are so consistent. I think he wanted over three. That's got fake Over crank arm 180. He's a far fake. He wants to whip fake Wow. Perfect. It's a lot of technical tricks to put in one run. Opposite two for over. There's that death cage. Oh, slip the pedal. Again. Switch 450? Question mark. <laughs> <laughs> nice run from Daniel Tunta. One mistake as far as I could see with the slipping of the pedal, and that was basically it. Solid. Really good run. That tail up fake. I think that was switch as well. These guys are so solid with those switch or uh, as they're calling them in mountain biking, opposite tricks. It's hard to tell. The only way to know is to be part of that, you know, crew and, and be with these guys and see them riding on a regular basis to know the difference. Especially when they run four pegs, it's hard to tell which way they ride mm -hmm. sometimes. Wow, there you go. A nice improvement for him, 84.20. Solidifying his score and holding on to that third place really well. So let's see if anybody's going to push him down. And we've got our next rider up, Brock Rayford. Definitely a possibility that he could do it here because he did have one mistake in his last run. He has to do it if he wants to make finals. So let's see what he's got. Nice truck hop. Tooth over from the L. Nice tooth hanger, thank you. Wow, on the skinny quarter, heading for the up rail. Oh. oh no. Just a little get off there. It's not going to be enough to beat Tim I don't think. Wow. That's a nice 
combo. Dodges are like that. Switch for it. Passing to Kongong. Slipping off. Uh, that's going to do it for Brock. That's a bit of an unfortunate situation for him. One big get off and uh, a m small mistake at the end there and that's going to cost him no chance for him to move up and I don't think we're going to see a score improvement either. This is the moment where it went wrong. That up rail whip just not getting on it. Here's the switch whip. Kicks it with his Last been over crank and then he slides off. Oh, his Ouch. ankle looked like it snapped. No up. kidding. Bar manual, this is nice. Goes feeble on the hubba. Hard 360. It was a good run, just maybe not enough. 77 2 0, so he's going to stick with that first run score. Definitely is better, but uh, he is out of any possibility to move on to the jam session as we move on to our next rider, Simon Barako. Nice fast punt over with the rail. Fan come up. Same start, same run so far. There's that how you will, but so much Steve. He wanted the tire ride up to Krankan, but he just slipped a foot again. It's going to be that ice nose. He wanted the bar out. So I'm pull that in practice. Definitely brings his own style to the course. He wanted, oh. he wanted the up crank arm, gap crank arm down. It's almost looking like the wind's out of his sails at this point after a couple of... Uh, small fobs in the beginning there and yeah that's going to do it for Simon that's the hard part about the qualifying heats you have to do a solid run to make it through to finals ah, he really hooked up on that one this is the tyre ride right? tyre ride yeah. to crank arm and he just comes off Seventy-three, four, zero, oh, sixth place. So uh, he's at the bottom of the bucket in this one. Unfortunately, a good solid rider with a very individual style, like you mentioned, and I like that. Next rider up, though, Garrett Reynolds, currently on top of the ranking, as we can see, top right hand side of your screen with ninety-one points. How do you improve on that? <laughs> I mean, really? Garrett will find a way. Trust me. Is that fast spin to backwards put the Indian out? Oh, oh no! That's an uncharacteristic slam from Garrett. He's in the final though, I think he's gonna treat the crowd to some Garrett magic now. Let's see if he can pull the Oh! Down whip out? Did I get that right or was that decade out? Switch down whip to fakey out. Wow. <laughs> Wow. I always get that mixed up like we were talking about earlier, the decade to or, or down with it's it's just a, it's like a blind spot for me. Me too, man. It's not always easy to see. Time runs off for Garrett Reynolds. Definitely no improvement on this run for him, but uh, with a 91 point score from his first run, he's got really nothing to worry about. Tooth hanger on a little flat rail. A tooth hanger flat rail. Tooth hanger to bar, sorry, on the little flat rail is always going to be hard. Here's that 180 bar to backwards crook to Indian out. Pulled perfectly. Garrett missed practice yesterday. Didn't even turn up. He slept all day. Garrett doesn't need practice. <laughs> 83-6-0 zero run two score. So definitely going to hang around with that first run uh, 91. Uh, but still top spot with one guy to go. Chad Curley. So at this point, it's Garrett Reynolds, Chad Curley, and Daniel Tunta 
who are in the next round for that final jam session. Let's see what Chad's got for us. There's Keith, 360 over. Ice switch bar on that square rail. Toothpick on the front peg, ice pick on the back peg, by the way, folks. Over tooth hanger. Wow. Landon manual. Nice fast plant. 180. Was that on purpose or was that just a uh, correction? <laughs> exactly what he's doing. Uh, <laughs> we'll leave it at that. There's that nolly crook to 180. Completely different one from his first one. Nice nose really across that long wedge. He knows he's in the final, he's just chilling. So consistent. Amazing. You yeah, Chad. And the nose wheelies are uh, incredible for me as well, because no brakes, so you can't call it a stoppy. And uh, he's not putting his foot down like a hang five. I mean, I was happy when I could do a hang five on my bike back in the day. Most of these guys can nose wheelie further than I can manual. <laughs> I don't believe that for an instance. Slipping a pedal there on the whip. Big smile on his face. Yeah, I think the slip of the pedal in that case is small potatoes, like you say. He's in the final He's no matter final. what. So he can concentrate on the jam session now. <laughs> Recently produced an amazing edit for Seek Life. 89-4-0 run number two. Wow, good improvement. Holding on to second place no matter what. So we're going to see Chad Curley, Garrett Reynolds, and Daniel Tunta moving on to the jam session. And we're going to get our next six riders out on course here for the second heat. So there you go. Garrett Reynolds with a 91. Chad Curley coming close with an 89.40. And Daniel Tunte, 84.20. So uh, those are the guys we're going to see moving on to the next round. Brock, Felix, and Simone. Unfortunately, they're out for the rest of the day. And uh, the guys that are coming out on course now, Dan Lacey, Alex Donicky, Devin Smiley, Bruno Hoffman, Dennis Anderson, and who's our last guy there? Alex Kennedy. Just getting a quick warm up on the course. It's a good opportunity to preview what we might be seeing from these guys as well. The way I see it though, this is a pretty big course as far as yeah, footprint is concerned. So there's a lot of time that can be spent going from one obstacle to the other. How much is that going to play a, a factor in how these guys, like we talked about earlier, choose their lines? They have to choose their lines carefully because they're going to want to make sure they're doing tricks that are hard enough on each obstacle to get in the final. It's no good just cruising around the whole course making sure you hit everything and doing a little trick on everything. You want to, it's better if you sort of do the best tricks you can on, on, on fewer obstacles rather than you know, racking them all in. So our judging criteria doesn't really take into consideration for use of course in this particular instance? I guess they would, but you don't need to hit everything if you've got bangers on fewer obstacles. Yeah. Speaking of bangers on a few obstacles, our current leader Garrett Reynolds with 91 points. Does anybody have a chance to break the 90 mark and beat that score in this second group? Perhaps Dennis Anderson. It's always a possibility. Never write off Dennis. Dennis uh, won the Dew Tour last weekend, so he's definitely comfortable on his bike at the moment. So, and such an all-round rider Dennis is, so always a favorite at any contest, whether it be dirt, park, or street. But yeah, we've definitely got a contest on our hands. All right, Dan Lacey's gonna be the first guy to uh, hit the course here in heat number two in the semifinals. <laughs> so serial. <laughs> he had a big year last year, worked solidly, solidly on his uh, above below video part, which turned out amazing. One of the older guys out there as well. 26 years old, Dan Lacey. Big turn down on that skinny quarter. Always good to see Dan riding transitions. Oh! 
That's our first proper crash we've seen all day. He's doing that every single go in practice. He might have... He's up three to Smith to hard 180 he wanted. Got such a nice solid style. Everything he does is does perfectly. Probably want to scratch that run. Yeah, he didn't seem too happy coming off of the the horn there. Let's see what happened. There's that nice turn down. Ah, uh, yeah. Not getting enough spin on that peg hard way through. All right, Dan, what you got for us here? Score-wise, where are you going to go? Come on. Close-up of Dan Lacey's Federal DLX frame. Celebrating 10 years of, of being a Federal rider. Wow. 77-2-0-6 at this point. Now you're seeing the scores added up with all the other guys as well. So the first guy in the heat isn't getting that uh, hot seat anymore. Garrett Reynolds is going to be the one holding on to that with 91 points. Next rider up, Alex Donachy. Alex Donachy, one of the most exciting street riders in the UK. Recently won his first ever pro contest at the Vans Rebel Jam in London. He's shown he's got what it takes at the big occasions. So technical with his riding. The BSD rider starting strong. Doesn't look like he's rushing. We've seen some of the guys really attack the course, go fast and, and go trick to trick, and he's really methodically moving from uh, place to place on course. I think that's, he surprised everyone in London last year with that kind of approach where uh, there's no real urgency, he just cruises from obstacle to obstacle, just destroying each, each rail with, with technical tricks. He was never really a contest rider a couple of years ago. Just decided to break through and start showing everyone how it's done. Absolutely killed it in practice. Wow. So relaxed. Yeah. I mean, it, it's almost like it almost yeah. appears lazy the way he rides yeah. the course, you They're know? going to fall asleep. Here's that switch feeble. It's a 180 bar out on that flat rail. Made a couple of mistakes, but his run was still so solid. Another view of that feeble 180 bar. In practice, he toothed down the rail, landed manual, and then did something. No, a feeble five on that block. It was unreal. All right, well, let's see what the judges have to say. Alex, ooh, nice, 83.80, ranked fourth place right now. So he's making some moves. And uh, like you were saying, you know, just destroying each of those obstacles, but taking his time to get there. So uh, talking about quality over quantity in this case. Next rider out will be uh, Devin Smiley. Appropriately named, actually. <laughs> Devon's really shown in the past couple of years that he's pushing street riding in the direction that, you know, he's, he's got the free coaster on, he's, he's learning all the new school tricks, and he's always got, it, got what it takes at the big occasions. Always brings, you know, his own flavor to the course. And I think I heard a, a ice pick bonk on, the, on that last trick on his way up to the tire ride, not sure. It's not starting as well as what I thought he would. There's that hanger to Basta and such a hard trip that. Nice steezy ice along the flat edge to Manuel. 
And people up back from the <laughs> room. <laughs> nice. <laughs> God, what a way to end a run. Amazing. But as you were saying, needed to maybe have a stronger start. If you can end the run like that with a strong start, that's going to be a pretty spectacular run as we take a look back here in slow mo. There's that ice bunk up to the tire ride with a suicide no handle off. So you messed that trick up, but it was still a bar to peg, so it's still super hard. And here's that manual along after the ice. Feeble up. Hops up to manual. Manual backwards down that box to fakey. If I had to wager a guess, I'd put him in the mid 80s. What would you say? Yeah? 85 4 0, third place. Really nice. Well, he's got himself uh, a position in that jam session at the moment. Remember, it's the uh, top six riders after the two sessions are done that move on to the jam session. Bruno Hoffman coming up next. Always a finalist at the big events, Bruno Hoffman. One of the most prolific street riders in Europe. The federal rider, always a favorite at these contests. Starting off with the ice to over two from the Kinka. Somehow gets away with that. Nice 540 in the bank. Heading to the up rail. Crooked to 180. Backwards full cab. This kind of consistency that always wow. makes him a favourite. There's that wally to nose, really. Bruno slaying this course. Switch free. Amazing start to his run. And look the ice down. What's the rule in this case? The horn goes just as he's heading towards that last trick. Did it let him have it, count it, or is it out? It's counted if you're heading towards the obstacle. Okay. You got away with that. <laughs> Sometimes I think that Bruno's riding so technical that judges have a hard time sort of scoring him. I could see that. And he's so consistent. 87, Bruno moves into third place. And he pushes Devin Smiley down a notch. So uh, Bruno is going to be happy about that. And that was a hard run to follow. But if anybody can do well following a run like that, it's Dennis Henderson. Dennis, one of my favorite riders. One street style last weekend at the Dew Tour. Where's he headed? I think we're going to see up rail. Right. Oh, wow. Whoa. Downside two from the quarter. Nice. <laughs> Massive, <laughs> massive tail whip. Up rail switch whip. <laughs> oh, small pedal slip. Mali bar. Then it's going faster than everybody else. Oh, switch 180 bar for that flat rail. I mean, it's safe to say in this case, we're talking about quality and quantity because he's attacking this, you know, completely opposite to what we saw earlier. Oh, no. Oh. Hangs up on that little ledge on the way down from the quarter and... Uh, that's, uh, I think, as you would say, uncharacteristic for Dennis, but, you know, he's attacking this course with a lot yeah. of vigor. Huge tower. He, he did that earlier in practice and nearly missed the, the, the skinny quarter coming in. Here's that up rail to switch whip. Just slipped the pedal, but didn't touch the foot down. This is where he wanted the wall right. No, he wanted the foot jam, but earlier he did the wall ride three on that. Subbox is super close to that quarter. Yeah, that's a. It seems like a pretty technical little section, all in all. There's that switch 180 bar spin off the flat rail. Amazing one from Dennis. 85. He's sitting in fifth place. Whoa. 
that's pretty close to the end, hey? He's got a spot in the in the jam session for now, but uh, yeah. I mostly agree with the judges' decisions, apart from that one. And he got ripped off a little bit there. Alex Kennedy up next, 23-year-old out of London. The Colt Rider won this contest last year, so he's looking to have it back. He's got some strong competition on his hands, though. Uh-oh. Is that Molly overcrank arm just slipping his pedal? Uh, that's a rough start for Alex right now. Seems like uh, that first small crash has uh, made a mess of things for him. It's always hard to get back up and ride well after you've crashed your first trip. Yeah, it almost looks like he's given up here. AK, somehow he remains so calm though. You see most riders throwing the bike and getting angry, but AK just chilled. Are you looking at better than that on the second run? He's chill. Yeah, clearly not happy with the way things went in that run, but uh, yeah, I like to see no temper tantrums. That's <laughs> Looking for the backward crook, and then wanted, he wanted to 180 and land forwards crook down the second stage. 68.80. Wow, Alex Kennedy at the bottom of the ranking here after his first run in the second heat. We'll go back to the top of the running order for the second heat as we'll get a quick overview of the current ranking. Garrett Reynolds still. The only man who's on top with an untouchable 91 at this point, Chad Curley holding on to second. But Bruno Hoffman, Devin Smiley, and Dennis Henderson have done a good job to get into that top six mix along with Daniel Tunte. I think we'll see a good run from Dan Lacey now. He's, he's pulled most of the stuff he's run for in practice. He just needs to put it together in his second run. So there you go, our current leader, Garrett Reynolds, and uh, our next rider up is going to be Dan Lacey, like you say, and uh, all these guys can do is just watch and wait and uh, see how the rest of the pack does as we take a look at Garrett's, or one of Garrett's runs here. It was the second run, I believe. <laughs> Lacey's having a good time out there today. Score to beat for a top spot is 91 even. Heading towards the skinny quarter. Big turn down. Back towards the up rail. Gets that up rail hard 360. So much speed. 360. Smith. Whoa! Holy smokes, folks. So gnarly, that ledge. Super skinny. And high. Nice. Ice along that ledge bar. Oh, ouch. Big three over the rail. Lacey usually pulls that. He's done huge threes in, in a lot of his video parts. Above the low last year. Seriously, massive three sixties. Yeah, that was a pretty heavy crash. It almost looked like, I don't know if we're going to get slow-mo, but it almost looked like his wheels touched down, slid out on him, and he uh, got a good piece of his shoulder and maybe even, even a bit of his head on the on the landing. But he seems okay. He Happy to see him up and walking. He can take a slam, Lacey. Yeah. I think most of these guys can. They're tough as nails. There's this turn down. Overclick there. Pucked up. Oh yeah, mostly shoulder I would say. Still, that's a that's a zinger. Seventy six point eight zero. So a seventy seven two zero on his run one is going to be his keeper, and that's it for him today. I'm pretty sure. 
Not going to see anywhere him riding the rest of the day, huh? That's a bummer. Always good to see Lacey out there enjoying it. All right, Alex Donaghy, second run for him. He's just outside of a spot with an 83-80. But as we saw, he made a couple of small mistakes in his first run. And he's bumped a toboggan. Switch feeble 180 bar. Definitely one of the best street riders in Europe. Breaking onto the international scene. Incredible bike rider. There's that feeble 540. Come on, Alex. I see you in the finals, brother. Switch feeble. And this is what we were mentioning earlier, this very lazy, almost lazy style. Oh, no. And this is exactly the opposite of what we saw Dennis Anderson do. It's like we might not see Donaghy in the final. This is a shame. There's that crooked 180 up. Feeble 540. Uh, that's a little bit too far forward. Yeah, that's on an uncharacteristic crash on a small rail from Alex. One eight zero, so seventh is going to stay, and he's out of it. Means next rider up, Devin Smiley. All right, Devin's got to stay on top of it this time. Eighty five point four zero, he's ranked in fourth. He's in a good position. Wants to improve it. Wow, Frank Arm to over manual. Switch feed, over double peg to fakey. There's that truck to fakey. Amazing start from Devon's run. Nice ice oh. up the rail to hard 180. This is a solid run. Devon's light and he's causing fire. Just slips the pedal on that flat rail. I don't think that'll damage his score too much. Everything else is solid. Definitely going to be moving on. Well, we had a, an 85.40 score for his first run as we take a look back at some of the highlights of his second run. He doesn't need to really do much here. I mean, he's in fourth place at the moment. I think we'll see a big improvement on his first one though. The judges will be liking how he linked everything together. Hop backwards bathroom off the hubba. And you were mentioning that hubba is really narrow on top, so targeting that is pretty impressive yeah. as well. Riding along at fake is Definitely scary. Wow, there you go. 87-6-0. He's sitting in third place. He pushes Dennis Anderson down a notch. Daniel Tunte is still in sixth place, but there's a couple of riders here. As Bruno Hoffman and Dennis Anderson are still safe. But Alex Kennedy is, I would say, the wild card here when he gets his run. For that, though, it's going to be Bruno Hoffman. Ice down the king cut to over two. Take the two to over on the flat bar. Switch five. Got a lot of speed heading toward the up rail. Double peg two panel 180 off full cab. Bruno making it look easy out there, as usual. <laughs> All the up to nose down on the ledge. Over two, three, six, two. Already in this run, he's done so much. Still 
still only 22 years old. Feels like Bruno's been on the scene forever. Yeah, you've heard about him uh, and his, his name floating around the BMX scene for a long time. Even before he turned pro, there was a lot of talk about this young kid, Bruno Hoffman. There's that ice to over two for Double King. Here's that. Murray's really down the ledge. Perfect. <laughs> Lincoln technical with big moves. Definitely going to see Bruno in the final, that's for sure. There's that switch 540 on the flat bank. The Federal Rider killing it out there today. Eighty-eight point eight zero moves up to third place. So uh, that's a great improvement for him. He's safe. Dennis Anderson coming up next. Dennis Anderson is now sitting in fifth place. Daniel Tunta has been to this point safe in sixth place. It's the top six guys moving on to the next round. But Alex Kennedy still has to ride. Dennis again looking at going twice as fast as everybody else today. Downside two. Big Wally down. Huge tail from the skinny water. It's almost looking like the manual's back out of that. Up rail, strip it, pulled perfectly this time. Yeah, straight to the pedals. Very, very nice. Nolly bar to bar. Last bit to the bottom over the L. Insane run so far. Had an incredible weekend last weekend. There you go. There's a foot jam in the wall ride. Perfect run. This might be it. Flawless. This might be uh, the run that puts him in top spot. If not in top spot, definitely in second. But he definitely did enough to knock Garrett Reynolds off there. Linked everything up amazingly. Used a lot, the whole course. Speed, style, trick, you had it all. And we've seen these guys in a points battle many times before. Dennis Anderson and Garrett Reynolds. Big tail whip on the skinny quarter. Here's that foot jam. It's really close, that wall. Dennis also missed practice yesterday. <laughs> he slept all day. Dennis doesn't need to practice like the other riders. Learning by osmosis, he put his trick list underneath his pillow. He owns his own clothing brand, Market. They produce one of the most groundbreaking videos of all time, arguably. They're just taking their time with Dennis's score. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Team in there with deep discussions going on by uh, at the end of our list. Tom Creasy, one of our judges today. 89.60, second place, as you said. But AK still to ride, so it could all change. But he's got to do some serious damage out there on course in this run because the only, I mean, Daniel Tunta is sitting on the bubble. So uh, he's really the only guy that can be damaged at this point uh, by a good run from AK. Oh no! He could still retrieve this run. Come on, AK. AK tries the hardest tricks. And that's why when he when he pulls them all, he, he gets the rewards. That's why he's the winner last year. Yeah, but at this point there's no chance for him. He's just had too many get-offs in his run, and that's two times in a row with uh yeah. 
unfortunate for Alex Kennedy. So our defending champion here at the Munich MASH BMX Rink Contest is uh, unfortunately not going to have the opportunity to continue to defend that title. Had such a good practice session, the Colt Rider. Everybody's favorite rider, AK. The Colt Riders, so inspirational. Slight improvement, but still ranked in 12th, so a 72.60. And that means it's gonna be Garrett Reynolds, Dennis Anderson, Chad Kearley, Bruno Hoffman, Devin Smiley, and Daniel Tunta, who was probably sweating bullets when uh, Alex Kennedy came out onto that run. But Daniel Tunta has managed to get in there so we got a couple of Germans in the mix for the jam session, along with four Americans. And the scores are reflective of uh, some pretty high level riding here. And unfortunately, there we go with Alex, Brock, Felix, Dan, Simona, and Alex Kennedy. Those guys are all done for the day so they can sit back, relax, have a drink and uh, watch the jam session. Just to give you a little heads up on the jam session way that works is there's six athletes. It's 15 minutes long, and there's going to be scoring after each run. Three runs in the jam, the best two count, and each run is about 40 seconds long in the jam session. So uh, it's weird to say jam session with a 40-second long run, but, I mean, as far as jam sessions goes, uh, there's no pauses for TV or anything like that in between each of these runs. We talked about this the other day in our meeting um, it's just as a matter of safety you got a bunch of bikes flying around out there at the same time might get a little bit interesting super hard for the riders they've just all had two runs each and now they're going to go back out three runs in the jam session and then they're going to finish with a final run so a lot of work to end up in the top spot and once again these guys are battling for a total of 30 thousand euros prize money the top spot the man at the top of the podium at the end of the contest today will receive 10 grand 10 thousand euros uh, we'll also have a best trick competition and that's going to be based on all of the tricks that we've seen throughout the competition so uh, 1500 euros will be what the best trick competition winner will get Plays here, Chad Curley. That feeble hard 360. Just Steve. insane. He's done this with that huge tail whip. Nobody rode the course with as much speed as Dennis. It's that switch 180 basket off the flat rail. I've seen Dennis ride half pipe though. I mean, he's got a lot of skills. And that's why we say, you know, he's a pretty good all around rider. He can really cover the, the different facets of BMX. As I said earlier, no stranger to any discipline in BMX. Always a fine lifting part, dirt or street. Some say Dennis is the best rider in the world. But then this guy, Garrett Reynolds, Nice truck off of the flat rail there. Never actually seen Garrett ride any vert, but I've seen him ride street and dirt. Just an incredible athlete. Definitely comfortable on any, any train, whether it be park or street. There's that 180 bar, backwards crooks. The Indian off there. We've got quite a final on our hands. Ha. Six of the best riders in the world. Do we ever. Unbelievable. 
Just letting these guys warm up a bit. Uh, we should talk a little bit about the Munich MASH and the MASH Festival. The whole Olympic Park here is basically filled with the MASH Festival, and uh, it gives visitors a chance to have a go themselves in action sports. There's little, there's pump tracks set up around the area. There's little skateboard and mountain bike and BMX street courses all over the place. There's vendors with uh, artists and lounges and different brands are here. So, you know, there's, there's a ton of things for these people that are visiting the Munich MASH to do locally here. There's also the Cultural Village, the chill out area, bringing together the works of art and handcrafts by up and coming designers. And uh, basically it's a hodgepodge of ideas and creativity and a pretty relaxed atmosphere up there on the Cupertine Flats at the uh, area where our mountain bike final is going to be occurring later on today, hopefully. Right now though, we're just concerning ourselves with the BMX street rink. We're getting into the jam session. Six athletes that have made it out of the 12 invited riders from those two heats that we watched earlier on. And if you're just joining us, the jam session has the following riders in there. Garrett Reynolds at the top of the list with 91 points. Then Dennis Anderson right behind him. Chad Curley, Bruno Hoffman, Devin Smiley, and Daniel Tunta. Bruno Hoffman and Daniel Tunta, the only guys we could call locals, German riders, in the mix with a bunch of heavy favored American riders. It's going to be a really fun final to watch here. Three runs, best two count, and then they're going to have one final opportunity to get a single run, high score run, and then uh, we'll crown ourselves a champ for this weekend. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, top three riders in qualifying all reside in San Diego, California, so... Hotbed of riding, clearly. San Diego dominating this contest today at Munich MASH. You spent a lot of your time in Texas before moving back to the UK. A um, lot of good riders coming out of the Lone Star State as well. Austin, Texas is definitely the hub of BMX in the US. But then also, obviously, San Diego massive scene out there and so many good riders so but it's good to see a couple of Europeans in the final with Bruno and Daniel Tunto. I remember the my first two hip contest was in uh, Huntington Beach California 19 Jesus 87 that's a long time ago wow that ramp scared the bejesus out of me it was huge we still do contests in Huntington Beach. We've got the Vans US Open there this year, August 1st and 2nd. Big bowl contest, so big stack of riders heading out for that. And you mentioned there's a bit of a dry spell for the BMX contests at the moment, waiting for the remainder of the season to kind of get into the flow. And one guy that is here, but not riding, which we're a little bit uh, talking about uh, one of the guys that's moved over to mountain biking and his name just left my head. Help me out here. Ryan Nyquist. Ryan Nyquist. My goodness. One of the legends of BMX is actually going to be participating in the Diamond event here for the FMB World Tour mountain bike slope style contest. So that should be interesting. He's uh, only, this is only his second or third contest on a mountain bike, I think. Yeah, I think a lot of riders are surprised to see Ryan Nyquist ride in a mountain bike, but I thought it was really cool to see him out there just trying something different and riding jumps that are basically too big to ride in the BMX. <laughs> well, you uh, mentioned it earlier, outside of his comfort zone when we were talking about it, and I think that's really amazing. Start list is in reverse order of the ranking, so Daniel Tunta, who is ranked sixth coming into this jam session, will be the first rider to go. And then we'll see Devin Smiley, Bruno Hoffman, Chad Curley, Dennis Anderson, Garrett Reynolds. And remember, it is a 15-minute jam session. The guys will get three runs. Each run is roughly 40 seconds long. Um, and uh, then after that, we'll take the six riders into, we'll call it a super final. One run, 45 seconds. And then best two from this jam session count and the last run. So basically, it's a three-run score for them. Yeah, this jam session is more about... The guys can kind of focus on single tricks on, on one obstacle rather than doing a whole run like they had to in qualifying. They can definitely choose, I don't know, the, the Kinker or the Hubber and focus on, you know, some of their hardest tricks. So 
How hard is it for Daniel Tunta right now to be going out as the first rider in this jam session? Um, I think he's, you know, he'll be warmed up. He'll be stoked to make finals. I think that's the biggest thing is getting through the qualifying stages and making the finals is always like a, a sigh of relief. You know, you know that you've, you've already done well. So you get to go out there and have a bit more fun. And obviously with the, with the heat we've seen, with the stacked riders we've had, we'll be stoked to have made it through for sure. But he definitely rode good in qualifying. Did some really technical tricks. Got a feeling we're going to see the same kind of run for Daniel here. Just to get us some good scores in the bag. Alright, here we go. There's that peg over to normal peg. Nice ice. Ice. <laughs> Nose bonk to Baskin on the flat ledge. Great start to his run. And towards the Kinker. Wow. Really surprised me today, Daniel Tante has. Nice gap over ice from the Kinker. Switched Kink rail up. You're right, that is a small ledge there on that quarter pipe. That's mini. Yep. You barely hold the tire up there. He definitely used the, a lot of the course there on the jam session. I thought the riders might approach it differently now that they, they're in the jam, but Devin Smiley's heading in for his first run. Nice two for over Kankar. Judge is liking that one. Wow. We saw that in qualifying. Sui no hander. Nolly Bar, so much style. Tens that. Wow. 180 over backwards pegs. So much ability on the bike, Devin Smiley. Looking for the bar ice. Not quite getting it there. Hanger bar. Super hard trick that one. Back with Manuel down the box. Good finish. As you pointed out, a couple of small mistakes in there, but uh, all in all, uh, a pretty good run. I do know going to answer. Yes. Ice down the kinker to over two. Good flow so far, too. So consistent, Bruno Hoffman. Getting the nose. 360 over two from the flat rail. Wow. Ice up the kinker. I've not seen many people do that. All the way, two no less. Wanted the 180 out, but didn't quite get it. And look, Chad Curley on the bar from manual. The feeble hard three. Not wasting any time to get started either. Chad Curley right. gets out there quick like a bunny. Switch whip, switch bar. Amazing start to Chad's run, heading towards the up rail. So far standing is uh, Tunta on top with an 81.0, 8.0, excuse me, and then uh, Smiley and Hoffman in second and third. And that's after the first run and halfway through this group of six with Chad Curley still in the middle of his run, so hasn't been judged yet, which is why we're not seeing him up there. That the scoring will be coming in quick in this jam session. Chad will definitely be in the top spot after this run. Straight in now with Dennis, I believe. Yep, you're right. Dennis Anderson it is. Evil bar. Early in the top spot. 180 bar on the flat bar. And that's the beauty about this scoring system, too. We'll get live updates during the jam session. We'll see who improves, who doesn't, and uh, who's on top right away. Wow! <laughs> yes. Dennis has started really well. Oh! Nice foot jam, Fabio, on the skinny quarter. Mixing it up. 
definitely adding stuff that he didn't do in qualifying. There's the wall wide. Gap over Crook. Definitely, I think Dennis will go into second place there. And we'll Garrett see. Reynolds next. Garrett starting right away. Half cup switch whip. Keep a close eye on that graphic up in the top right hand corner, folks. We'll see. Uh, there you go. Dennis Anderson, 89.20, knocks Kelly down to second place. Daniel Tinta holding on to third with Garrett Reynolds on course right now. Garrett, as you know, is the guy with a 91 point score from the first round here. Little foot tap, though. It's going to cost him. We're looking at the best street rider in the world right now. So amazing. Shot the BMX world of his recent Red Bull edit. 180 tail up to Fakey. Be interesting to see what the judges think of that. I have a feeling Dennis Anderson is going to stay on top, but uh, Daniel Tunta back at it now. Garrett won't be far behind, that's for sure. We've got the full list of riders just waiting for the judges to uh, put it through. Yeah, Garrett Reynolds sitting in second with an 88.20. So he's one point behind Dennis. Daniel Tunte in fourth with an 81. And after his run, we'll see how our judging system works there. You'll get an idea of uh, whether he stays the same, improves, or drops. Tunte's riding amazing out there. since the last time we saw him ride. He seems like the kind of rider that really takes it seriously, works when he run and practice. But is it going to be enough? Devin's back in. Devin Smiley heading towards the... And this is what... Oh, no. So when you crash in the jam session, it moves on to the next rider. Going down hard there. Getting up gingerly, but he seems like he's okay. He twisted his ankle. Okay. <coughs> so we'll look at this again. Switch feeble to backwards manual. Ouch. Yeah, I rolled over on that left ankle. And you can see he's already got his right one padded up. As you can see, Tunte in the top spot now because we've added his second run score to his first score. Bruno Hoffman's back in. Taking a bit of a page out of Dennis Anderson's book, riding pretty quick on course. There's that ice up to 180. That one's a super hard one to do in the contest. There's that big three over the rail. with your lace crash on. Gap. Improvised <laughs> gap to peg over on the flat rail. Daniel Tinta on top for now. Chad Curley in again. There's an 180 bar. Bruno Hoffman Tinta combined still the score top with 158, so Tinta's still at top, like you said. Oh, oh. no! <laughs> oh, my goodness. He started amazing, though, so if he can get his bike up and rack in a couple of more tricks, and I think he'll be sitting on top, but Dennis is back in. Oh no, he can't go once he's crushed, can he? Jam session moves along. There's that foot jam on the wall ride. Gap over two from the Kinka. Switch Smith, 180. Even so, Chad Curley combined score. He's on top again, turn to behind him, Hoffman, in third yes, place. Wall ride to Fakey for Dennis. Tire ride to whip off. How does Dennis tire ride that rail every single go? Heading back towards the up rail. Pegs, 
switch whip. Perfect. Oh, wow. There's that nolly free. Dennis will definitely go back on top now. With that run. He knows it. Amazing run, Dennis. Yeah, he's pretty happy about that one. Absolutely. He's starting to heat up there. Out there now. Here's Garrett. Two pretty consistent riders at this point battling. There you go, 180 points, Anderson on top. It really has turned into a battle now. Ah, oh, uh -oh. just missing the pegs, the pedals, sorry. Wow. Anderson sitting in the top spot. So Garrett could drop that run. He'll take his next run score. Needs to make it count. Here's that opposite down with to fake it. Pedal right in the shin there as well. That's always fun. Tempo back in. Overpeg manual. Ice along the box to bar. Linking it together really well. Switch. I'm not sure if that's a switch peg or not, but that was a up the kink route to three out. If it was switch, it was gnarlier. Well, Daniel's in a good position right now in third place, so if he can have a consistent run and yeah, hope against hope that uh, some of the other guys will make some mistakes in their third run, he, uh, we may see him on the podium. He's starting to enjoy it a lot oh. more now. The pressure's off a little bit. Came close to the end of his time anyway, so that may not harm him that much. So he can drop that run if he likes. He's Devon back in with a crank arm to Manuel, looking at the box. Switch feeble. Manages to hold on to that. Fuck fakey. Anderson on top, Curly second, Tante third. No change in uh, Tunte's score, by the way, it stayed the same. That uh, third run you mentioned, he dropped it. Well, it was dropped automatically for him, it's the best two of the count in this one. Ah, he just lost grip on that right hand. Bruno Hoffman at it. That puts 180. Come on, Bruno, hold it together. Big gap over two from the Kinker. Switch ice on the flat bar. Looking to better his last score. Switch feed with three. Looking for the over two from Manuel. Could probably drop that score. Oh. Definitely Curly. hard work for the judges having to tabulate the scores a lot quicker than usual in this jam format. Chad, bar ice down the kinker. Switch through the 180 bar. Heading to the up rail. Looking for the peg up bar manual. Nice free over row. Not getting the one, I don't think he wanted that. Here's Dennis. Wow. wow! Holy smokes! Huge gap to peg. Dennis is on fire now. Oh. Just slipping off on that switch 180 bar. You can drop that run. Still in the top spot. So Garrett Reynolds. Oh, he's going to keep riding here. I thought that was. Uh... Ah, I see. Bit of a rewind here. I don't think this, this run will count though, because he's already. He's already crashed. I think the. 
to crash your scores tabulated handsomely. Well, we'll see when uh, they show Anderson's uh, third run score here. And Garrett do to answer this. Started really well. Anderson still in the top spot. There it is. Backwards 50 50 up to bar out. Pressure's on now for Garrett. No change in Anderson's score, by the way. Only uh, staying at the 180 80. Bar backwards crook to 180. Tooth hanger bar. Garrett outside of a podium spot at the moment, but he's still in that uh, third run, so. Uh, uh, I think he up. wanted something different there, didn't he? Good up well. Hard 180. The half cap bar. But that'll probably do enough to get him into a top three, I would have thought. Bumps and tail. Ooh. Oh, there you go. Garrett Reynolds, 181 at the top. Pushes Anderson down to second place. Chad Curley in third. Tunta moves down into fourth place. Bruno Hoffman in fifth and Devin Smiley in sixth. But hey, we still have one more six man heat. So, best two scores from what we just watched the three runs. And now moving on to a single run for each guy, 45 seconds long, where they can really throw down and see if they can improve on that score. It's going to be a cumulative score for this one. And uh, yeah, you can see, you're right. It's very, very close. I was quite surprised to see Garrett knock Dennis off the top spot there, but, but both runs are incredible. So, and as you can see, only one point in it. Well, less than one point in it. Yeah. I think that jam format really took it out of the riders there. You could see uh, Garrett sitting down completely out of breath. There's no rest for... It's no rest for the wicked. It's all down <laughs> to the final run. There's Chad with a switch whip. Big hop to nose. I think he just come over the front of this one. Yeah. Then this is that switch Smith to 180. Here's that wall ride to 180. Not many people using that wall, super close to the quarter. And here's that opposite 180 bar over the rail. We've seen him pull that a few times, just under rotated. And here's that big gap to pegs off of that ledge. That is huge. that half cab whip switch down whip just stepping off of that 50 50 to bar uh, it seems like uh, you know what you you were mentioning is uh, on the money with regards to the guys are probably a little bit spent here they've been at it all day long with the warm-up and then the qualification round and then of course the uh, the two heats of six riders each three runs in this jam format and they're going to be pretty tired and uh, sounds like we're going to have an interview we're going to go down to our sideline reporter and uh, have a quick listen ah, here we go so i got uh, the in here like the in-house and all the people around this world looking at this guy Andy Zeiss, the big master here for BMX. Uh, you organized a lot of stuff here. Are you satisfied with uh, the semifinals and the finals so far? Oh, I couldn't be happier. Absolutely amazing. The riders off the hook. Just the jam format we just saw, it proved that the riders are really feeding off each other. They're pushing each other. And it shows in the riding. I mean, Dennis, uh, Garrett, Bruno, all the guys in the finals are actually charging it. And they made sure they collected some good points already. All right, thank you very much to Andy Tice and uh, make some noise in here for Andy. He organized everything and we're going to go to our last run in the finals. Nico Tatsik and Andy Tice down there talking with each other as we get ready to uh, drop these six guys. 45 seconds each and again it's going to be uh, the order mixed around a bit. Daniel Tunte will ride out. No, it's the same order as we started with the, uh, with the jam format actually, isn't it? Uh, so 
Jam format order, but one run, 45 seconds. This will be added to their existing score from the jam format. And then at the end of this, the top rider will be the man who takes home the 10 grand of the 30 prize purse for the competition. Let's not forget, in the mix is also 1,500 bucks for best trick. It's all to play for now. The next 10 minutes will, will determine who's our winner here. Daniel Tunte with a 165.60 going into this 45 second single run. Anything can happen now. Tunte proves that he's got enough to do what it takes. Oh! Just slipping off. You jinxed him. <laughs> oh no! Sorry, Tunte. The commentator's jinx. But anything can happen. Anyone else could, could slip a foot now. Now we've seen the fatigue is taking over for some of these guys and it is a long day. Come on, who's kidding? They've been here since 10 o'clock in the morning training and riding and getting ready to go and competition starts at one in the afternoon local time. I think Tim is just stoked to have made it as far as what he has today. Yeah, he seems pretty, uh, pretty happy just to be out there riding even with the mistakes he's making here so far. There's that decade down the stairs. Ouch. First one we've seen of him today. Usually, Tinte's all over the decades. But yeah, he made it through a stacked heat of qualifying riders to make finals. This is where it went wrong with him with the bar to ice just looping off the back. The decade down the stairs here. Big hop, spins over around the bars, slipping off the pedals. Goes down pretty hard there as well. Don't see many people doing decades. German crowd loving Daniel Tinto. Absolutely, so they should. 241.6 points combined between his two best from the jam and the score that he got in that 45 second run. Devin Smiley. No smile now though. I think he might be a bit nervous about this position he's in. I've not really seen him, you know, do the run that I know he's capable of yet. So if we, if we see Devon really pull everything he wants to do, he, he could finish really high here. Well, crossing our fingers for Devon. Yeah, from Manuel. It's an amazing start as well. <laughs> How he would have wanted it as that truck they keep. Truck driver, folks, by the way, 360 with a bar spin. See what, De what Devon's trying is so difficult that if he does pull it, the rewards are high, but it's so hard to be consistent. Wow. Slipping the bars there. See, another rider looks tired. Spent is what I would use uh, as a word for that. He just looks devastated after that uh, long day of riding. I think this is where the experience comes through. You've got riders like Garrett and Dennis and Chad that have been, been in this position many times, you know. I've seen, I've seen Garrett win X Games in LA after the heaviest of heavy nights out, just so hungover, but just knew what to do when it counts. But then you did say both of those guys didn't bother showing up for the warm-ups and uh, slept it off, so it could be that, uh, you know, that's made the difference for them today. Yeah, Garrett and Dennis, not even riding at all yesterday in practice. Slept all day, maybe conserved some of their energy. Seems to be working for them. What do they got for Mr. Smiley's score here? 
So that final run was an 82-6-0 with a 239.4. He's sitting in second place. You heard him there say how tired he was. Yeah. All right, Bruno Hoffman. Bruno is not looking too tired, but he's also looking a little bit serious. Bruno's never really serious. He just looks that way. He's just <laughs> daydreaming about a beer or a schnitzel. Schnitzel. Schnitzel, yeah. <laughs> or a bratwurst. He definitely hasn't been chilling since he's been here on the beers every night. There's that ice over to. Like he's going to carry on. 30 seconds. Going to the up rail. We go with our standings, top right hand side of your screen. Not getting the run he wanted, Bruno. Treats us to a nice ice up the double kink. Not many riders in this field have even got done that this weekend. There it is, over tooth manual. Opposite pegs, 180. Wow. Yeah, unfortunately that last set won't count for the judges. They'll have uh, put their pen pens down after the horn win. Fiddle rider looks tired. Here's that ice down the kinker, over tooth. This is where it went wrong. Looking for the fakey pegs. Oh no, over tooth. And you mentioned earlier on he got away with it, but this time it uh, bit him. Yeah, timing is everything in life. Yep, here's that ice down the kinker, over tooth. Amazing trick that is. So, it all comes down to what Garrett, Dennis and Chad have got for their final runs. I think any of them could take the spot. Yeah, three big banger riders still to come here, waiting on Bruno Hoffman's score from this single 45 second run. Bruno recently started his own clothing brand, Chow. You see the sticker there on the helmet? Yeah. 80.80, wow. 243.2 first place presently for Bruno Hoffman. But we still have three of the best riders in the world to go. So here's where that consistency and that experience that you talked about can play a big role. Chad Curley. After the scores have been tabulated, currently sitting in six, but this last run still to come. Oh, massive first trip for Chad. Doesn't even look tired. Switch whip over the driveway. Oh, the ledge wow, is nice. Really good start to Chad's run. Just coming off the bar to ice in the clinker. Kept the floor going though. Got to give him credit for that. Still an amazing run. Molly Kegs. Wow. Dennis and Garrett know they've got a drop. Really good run. Stay with the positions they are. There's that nose down the ledge. Nice. Really, really good run from Chad. He only made one mistake. We'll get a good score for that. I think it's safe to say that whatever happens, Chad is going to be on the podium. There's that 540 up from the ledge. Nose really right at the end of his run. See, he didn't even look tired, did he? 
I don't know if I would say that necessarily. <laughs> oh, but he does look like he's doing okay there. He's not breathing heavy or, or huffing, so. Bruno keeping a close eye on what the scores are. I think he knows he's going to get popped here. Well, Chad will go into first place, but then we still have to see Garrett and Dennis ride, so. Nice score, 258.6 total points. Puts him in first place. Oh. 258.6. Out of 300, I think the maximum is. Next up. Yeah, 300 is the maximum, and that's a pretty high score. 258.6. Dennis is going to go next. Two of the best bike riders on the planet about to battle it out here at Munich Mash. It's all, all comes down to this last run. Dennis knows it. Garrett knows it. And he's got a solid score going in, Dennis does, with 180. 180.8. Pressure. Stepping in this one, so he's really, really close. Yeah, the pressure's on, the pressure's on. It's all down to this run. They both know it. So they're no stranger to be in this position. Seems like every weekend these guys are having a battle for first place. Started off amazing, Dennis has. A massive tail from the skinny quarter. So consistent on that. There's that up rail switch whip. Started really well. Now he's gone far, far back. Walking over the L. Gonna do that 180 switch bar. There this is a is. good run so far. This Amazing is really run. good. Hope I didn't jinx him. Gonna come a foot jam on the wall ride he's chosen. Over two. Perfect run from Dennis. Garrett yeah. has got to make no mistakes. Yeah, he's really got the pressure on now. Garrett Reynolds is uh, in a bit of trouble here with a great run from Dennis Anderson. And uh, talk about peaking at just the right moment in competition. Yeah. Well, that's it. Dennis has done all he can now. He'll go into the top spot, that's for sure. But then Garrett now has to do a perfect run. Big tail up there. Just love how smooth and easy going that is yeah. as well. Yeah, I think... I think Dennis will go first, Chad will go second, and then Garrett will have to land everything to, to finish first. If anyone can do it, Garrett can. Tough job for Garrett Reynolds though, but uh, like you say, you know, he's one of those guys that uh, can work well under pressure, one of the best street riders in the world, if not the best street rider in the world. There you go. There you go, 273.4 points. Dennis Anderson takes top spot, nice. Flawless run, Chad made the one mistake. That's why he's sitting in third. But as I said, all comes down now to Garrett. Can he deliver a flawless run? If anyone can, Garrett can. Arguably the best street rider ever. He's touched the BMX bike. Multiple Nora Cup winner, voted by his pro rider peers. He's from Bought a House in San Diego. And he's honestly one of the most humble guys on the scene. Yeah, I've never had any anybody say anything bad about him. I've never heard anybody say, I'm not. He, he's a never hear about a wanker or something, but never. It's, it's just, you never hear anything bad about Darren. There it is, the half cap switch whip. Whip over the L. Truck off to the flat bar. Pressure's on. I'm nervous watching. Yeah. Looking the really good out. so far, though. He wanted to whip out that. The judges know that, they see him do it in practice. Yeah, the question is how much is that going to affect if the rest of his run can be uh, consistent and solid? Three to five. Switch the over the hip. It's going to be close. It's going to be really close. 
for it. Three. Is that 180 bar back. This oh. could dropped a foot. Can he deliver something special? It's not going to be enough, I don't think. Hey, it's anybody's guess sometimes with judging it. it, it you know, it's such a, a subjective uh, matter here. But that one dab from Garrett Reynolds could be the dagger that yep. uh, will not let him take the top of the podium. With it. Dennis Anderson's run was just amazing. It's going to be hard to call for the judges, but for me, Dennis was flawless. Uh, Garrett, you know, if he, if he yeah, nailed a flawless run, then, then you know, he'd be biting your fingernails. But I think Dennis is in a very, very good position here. Garrett looked a little bit tired. It's always, right here. it's always Gary between Reynolds. these two. There you yep. go. Dennis being as humble as ever. There's that truck off of that flat bar. Nice switch whip over the hip there. It's almost perfect. Just, just dab the foot on it. I think he knows it as well. That's the, oh damn, I dabbed a foot face. All right, let's see. Garrett, is, Garrett is definitely my favorite street rider. And such an incredible bike rider. But it's down to these three. I'm sure Dennis's dad is at home watching this on the I live feed. Dennis takes it. 270.2 for Garrett Reynolds. That means Dennis Anderson is your winner here at the Munich match at BMX Street Ring. I'm hyped for him, man. Garrett Reynolds in second, Chad Kelly in third place. That's your podium. It's an American sweep of the podium here in Munich. Congratulations, Dennis, man. He's been having an incredible year. He won the Dew Tour last weekend. He got second in Dew Tour Street, first in Street Style. First now at Munich Mash. What you say? Got second at X Games a couple of weeks ago. It's a pretty good run for him. Massive tail whip on the skinny quarter. He's got such a good attitude to bike ride and he's so humble. He, you know, he doesn't take things too seriously. He respects his peers. I was really impressed with Dennis when I stayed with him in San Diego. One of the nicest guys on the scene. One of the nicest cities in, uh, oh, it's a beautiful city. in the States as well. I mean, it's a really great town. And he was flawless in that last run. Didn't make a single mistake. What an incredible performance from Dennis Anderson. And all of the riders we had today in the final. Tunte was really good. Garrett, incredible as always. Bruno Hoffman was Bruno, solid as well. Always consistent. Chad Curley, just, just not, not doing what he wanted in that final run, but what an incredible run he had in the whole of the final. I liked watching Devin Smiley as well. I mean, uh, Really fun guy to watch ride out there with a big grin on his yeah. face. It's probably one of the things that I like about, you know, when these guys really are out there having a good time. It's enjoyable to see them smiling and you get into it as well. Yeah. But there you go, final results for the BMX Street Rink. Final here at the Munich Mash. Dennis Anderson, Garrett Reynolds, and Chad Curley, one, two, and three. Bruno Hoffman, Daniel Tunte, four and five. The two German guys doing very well in Devin Smiley, bringing it up with a sixth place being in that final. Good for him to be there as well. And I'm sure, I'm sure we're gonna see him hitting a few more finals in his time. Dennis will be so stoked right now. <laughs> so funny that, that, that Dennis and Garrett missed practice yesterday. <laughs> I think they rode the course for an hour on the Friday after they'd flown from California so they were super tired and then this morning they had a couple of hours so just proving why they're the best riders in the world. Yeah, it's incredible. That's called muscle memory right there. Daniel Tunte with that decade that just didn't go right for him. Over that ice to over two. 
that's where he went wrong. Big party tonight for all the riders in finals. <laughs> I think that's safe to say. I think they're having a riders barbecue this evening, or was that last night? That was last night. That was last night. All right, well, it uh, seems like we're going to go down to our sideline reporter and get an interview with Dennis Anderson, the man who won this one himself. <laughs> Oh, here we go. I got uh, Dennis Anderson with me, the winner at the Munich Mesh BMX Street Drink. Uh, how do you feel? I'm so psyched. Uh, psyched on being out here in Munich. All the fans were awesome, cheering us on the whole time. You guys are the shit. I feel like uh, Garrett won that one, but, you know, it's all good. <laughs> all right. Uh, are you going to party hard tonight? Hopefully. <laughs> all right. I would say uh, we have a huge applause from the audience here for... Mr. Anderson that won the street drink. Psyched on everyone that came out, you guys. Munich. Woo! <laughs> there you go, Dennis Anderson. Like you said, you know, humble to the end. He's always the most humble guy at the contest. Just enjoying himself. Gives it 110% every time. And, you know, he gets the rewards. and. Really, really, really stoked to see Dennis on top today. And I think the judges had a really good day today, it's safe to say. I think a lot of decisions were really on point. You know, Tough decisions too, yeah, not, I mean, not easy ones to make for really, them. Really, really hard decisions to make. And more often than not, judges get a lot of flack, but I felt like they were really on point today. Let's uh, send a big shout out to our judges, Brian Kaczynski, Jeff Klugovich, David Kluwerth, otherwise known as Hank. Hank. Tom Creasy, Marcus Wilke, and our head judge, Akeem Kujalski. And now we'll get down to our awards ceremony where we'll introduce one more time our top three riders here at the Munich MASH BMX Street Rink Final. Third place for Chad Curley there. Nicely done for Chad. He had a pretty good day today, and uh, I think, you know, save one or two small hiccups that you mentioned during this run, he might have even been on top of this podium. It was so tight. It was so tight. It really did come down to the last run there, and he just made one mistake, and that was enough to cost him a couple of spots on the podium. But... that bar manual and uh, what we're seeing right now is Chad's best trick so he's gonna get uh, 1500 bucks on top of the prize money for third place so uh, this is our won, best drink winner as well he won best trick for that bar manual to Smith nose bar in the hubba. incredible so good job by Chad Curley, third place and best trick, so he can just hang out there on the podium or, well, decides to come down after all. Purpose. Chad Curley so, back on the podium And now. now coming to our official prize giving or award ceremony here for BMX Street Rink. Chad Curley, as you know, third place. So $4,500 or 4,500 euro paycheck plus the 1,500. So uh, six grand at the end of the day, not bad for Chad Curley. Little visit to Munich and a paycheck. Yeah, he'll definitely be stoked on him today. Always nice to finish on the podium. Yeah, and Chad, no stranger to being over uh, in Europe, especially in Germany. He's uh, ridden the BMX Masters, BMX Worlds when they've been over here in Cologne. That's one of those ground base, groundbreaking base events that all BMXers just love to be a part of. Second place. And we thought for sure Garrett Reynolds was going to take this one, but the, the way he was performing earlier on in the day, but uh, Garrett Reynolds, he's got a second place. A podium. I mean, 
my money is always on Garrett at, at these kind of events, especially the street events. But um, as you saw, it went down to the last one, and anyone that made a mistake was was going to pay for it. And uh, if you had a flawless run, then that that would that would mean ended up on the top spot. And Dennis Anderson proved himself throughout the whole contest. Well, they always say in uh, endurance sports, you peaked at just the right time, you know. Tour de France or uh, any marathon around the world, if you peak at just the right time is uh, when you need to come through. And yeah. uh, that's exactly what Dennis Henderson did as we take a look back here at Garrett Reynolds during his run. Incredible riding from all of the top three riders. All right, and here we go with our winner. The number one guy here at the Munich Mash BMX Street Ring Final, coming all the way from San Diego, California, Dennis Anderson. He's got the top spot with a fantastic final run, and he really put it together. Like I said, peaking at just the right moment, and, and as you said, just an amazing final run. Perfect, flawless, not even a foot down anywhere in that right. run. He had an advantage where he got to see Chad make a mistake. He knew that if he could hold it on and do a flawless run, then he could put the pressure on Garrett to, you know, do the same. But really, really, really stoked on Dennis's riding today. Used the course in its entirety. Went big, went high, technical, switch. He had it all. Yeah, and he used a lot of the different elements that uh, we talk about in BMX. He had the street, he had a little bit of flat in there as well with some nice nose wheelies and, uh, of course, the vert aspect with that beautiful tail whip yep. off that skinny quarter pipe. And that being said, you know, a tail whip on a normal quarter pipe is in itself a challenge, but yep. then that tail whip off that little skinny quarter pipe, it's just amazing. And here he's going switch with that switch Smith 180. Here is that big wall ride to 180 on that super close wall ride. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> the champagne shower. The party starts now. Yeah, and these guys are going to have a, a big cleanup on their hands there for the skateboard competition, which is happening tomorrow. Chad Kearley, pretty happy about the situation all in all, third place. Garrett Reynolds in second place. Dennis Anderson, the happiest man of all today, on the top of the podium. What a fantastic event we had today. We hope you guys enjoyed it, but hey, you know what? We're not finished. There's lots more going on at the Munich Mash, so make sure you tune back in a little bit later on as the Swatch Prime Line will be going down for our Freeride Mountain Bike World Tour Diamond Series event here, and then tomorrow, we have the skateboard street rink for Sebastian Keep, who I very much thank for being here today. I'm Troy Mannering saying goodbye from Munich, Germany and the Munich MASH. And if you're here locally, come by and check out the festival grounds. It is awesome. Take care, everyone. Till the next time. Peace.